Hello, this is episode four of the Bandmaster Side Note series, which is uh, again a new little side project that I'm doing just to hopefully help provide some content for uh, everybody out there as they're doing um, e-learning, remote learning, uh, what have you with that. And uh, I'm pleased to have a, a previous guest on today, Professor Alex Kaminsky from Vandercook. Hello, Alex. Hello, Don. Good to see and, and hear you this morning. Um, and uh, I really want to have Alex on because as we, as music teachers dive into this remote e-learning thing, it, there's there's some hesitation on what we should do and, and, and a lot of questions and, and confusion. Um, and I know it's gonna be difficult for those of us, especially with ensembles, to recreate that ensemble experience online. That being said, um, I think Alex is going to have some great things uh, today that can help our students and us as teachers at home keep at least our, our, our breathing engaged throughout this, uh, this e-learning break, if, if you have, uh, if you will. Um, Alex, I had you out with Joliet Central in the fall. I think it was October or November that you came out. And it was uh, an absolute game changer for us. And it's, it's something that we stuck with, which was a, a new way of breathing. Um, when we first encountered it, it, it was actually pretty aggressive, I mm -hmm. thought. And it was it was a huge amount of air intake and outtake, um, but we really could not um, deny the results that were coming um, from that. So it was different, it was uncomfortable for us, but we stuck with it. And right to the last day of uh, school before we, we had to take this break, we were still doing that. So I'd love for you, uh, to maybe talk a little bit about uh, breathing and maybe show us some examples of things that people could do at home right now. Absolutely. So where this came about, uh, over my 30 years of being a high school band director, one thing that I noticed uh, was that younger musicians uh, struggled with getting enough air into the horns. And... Um, after, I don't know, several years, I realized that it was more than just not getting enough air into the horns. It was not getting enough air into the lungs because when our kids are in our band rooms, that's pretty much the only place they are required to inhale the amount of air that is required to produce a tone on a wind instrument. So I started doing some investigative work and um, listening to some folks do presentations on breathing and some breathing gym things. Um, I started applying that to my rehearsals. Now, understanding that uh, we have other elements of the warm-up that have to be covered, plus our music and uh, all the other things that we have to do, uh, I tried to find a way to sort of encapsulate uh, the breathing process. And what I did is I came up with the two-count breath. And we do this at the very beginning of every rehearsal and it's a, it's a matter of taking in as much oxygen, as much air as you can in two counts. Uh, and then we exhale uh, for 12 counts. Now, the, the purpose of this is twofold. One is to uh, maximize the capacity of air in the lungs. You just really uh, inhale as much as you can. And then as we do an exhale for 12 counts, or it could be eight counts or 16 counts, it ensures that the air is being exhaled in a smooth and steady manner. Uh, and it has other byproducts. So let me demonstrate uh, really quickly first. And again, it's a very brief um, introduction to each rehearsal. So I'm gonna put the metronome on. I'm gonna just put it on at uh, quarter note equal 104. Okay. Usually I do it between 96 and 104. Um, and then let me just stand up and tell you what I'm going to do. So. Uh, and I've done this, any band directors, if I've been in your band room, I've already done this with your students. So the very first thing that I do, I put my right hand over my stomach, uh, which is essentially around where the diaphragm is. And a lot of times you hear, you know, breathe from the diaphragm. I tell our students and even directors that we don't need to confuse the issue, except to know that when our lungs fill up, the diaphragm moves down and it causes uh, this area of the rib cage to expand. All right, so, so the diaphragm moves down. So I, I have the right hand on the stomach so that we ensure that that indeed is happening. I tell the students, make sure that the right hand is moving forward on the inhale. And then it, the belly button is basically going back to your spine on the exhale. And then uh, what we do is we breathe through our big knuckle. You, you can see me okay there? Absolutely, yeah. Great. 
So we breathe through our big knuckle like this. Actually, it's, it's our core knuckles, but we breathe through the big knuckles, uh, creating sort of an O shape with our embouchure like this and inhaling. And what this does, uh, really a couple of things. Number one, it creates a little bit of resistance. And anytime there's resistance, you're going to work a little harder to achieve whatever it is you're trying to achieve. For example, when we play our instruments, there's resistance when we blow air through the instrument, whether it's trying to get through the reed or the mouthpiece, the space, whatever it is, there's some resistance. So, and, and we have to work harder, especially for example, oboe players, there's a ton of resistance. So they have to push a little harder to get the air to go through the instrument. So by creating resistance the other way, uh, we work harder to get air into our lungs. So I'm gonna turn the metronome on and we're going to go uh, in for two uh, and out for 12. The other thing I, I tell the students, and I actually stole this a little bit from Brian Kobe at Lockport Township because I've done this, I, I did this early on with his group way back at his band camp. Um, and he started uh, having his students, he, he would audiate out to, in to, and then they would do the 12 counts. Okay. And so I'm gonna ask you, Don, I don't know if this is gonna work with the lag, but I'm gonna ask you to say out to, in to, and that's all you need to say. And okay. I'll try to take my cue from you. When I say out to, I'm gonna expel all the oxygen, all the air in my lungs, I'm going to get rid of it. And then when you say into, I'm gonna inhale as much air as I can. Uh, and then I'll just do the exhale for 12. So all okay. you say is uh, out to, into. Okay, let me turn the metronome on. And um, let me try it facing you first. Out to, into. Two. Beautiful. That was perfect. And when I exhale for 12 counts, I deplete my lungs of all the air. So it's really an exercise because when you play um, your instrument, uh, technically you really should not get rid of all your air because that actually creates some tension at the end of the sound. But this is just an exercise to help the capacity of the lungs. So in for two, out for 12. I'm gonna do the same thing now sideways so you can kind of see my right hand and, and get a, a side perspective. And again, we do this at the beginning of every rehearsal. Okay, so same thing. All right. Out, two, in, two. And that's uh, pretty much it. It's it's very simple um, and a very short exercise that we do at the beginning of every re rehearsal. It literally takes maybe 60 seconds. Um, and then that gets our lungs sort of warmed up, expanded uh, the breathing. And then from there we go on to, uh, we sing, audiate whatever pitch we're going to um, play, which usually is a concert F. And then I, I have the horns on actually concert C on their G. Uh, so that their embouchure setting is a little more relaxed, uh, more like the trumpets. And then uh, we'll have the woodwinds then after that sustain the concert app while the brass buzz uh, after we sing it. And then we move into everybody playing. So that in a nutshell, like I say, it's very simple, very brief. I didn't want to, you know, prolong it. But uh, because the, the thing that directors are most concerned about is, well, we don't have time to do this. Uh, but again, I found a very succinct way to get the breathing going at the beginning of every rehearsal. Sure. And if I could give um, a couple of uh, notes on this as well from us doing this, um, you know, first off, of course, with our current situation, if you're doing this at home, make sure you wash your hands first. <laughs> that. Correct. Um, but number two, when we started doing this, um, number one, it's very, or it's very loud. The intake of it when you when you have the the knuckles up there is it it, it just sounds like this wind tunnel going in and i think well, that's if I can normal interrupt you really quick yeah um the one thing i tell the students is they can hear how much air i'm taking in when i do it and i can hear how much air they're taking in or not taking in so yeah. for example if i do it i'm going to do a and b here's a and here's b could you hear the difference Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And, and, and so that tells, you know, me and tells them whether they're really pulling air into their lungs. And, you know, the other thing we realized, too, with with my band, we did that and we committed to doing it 30 days in a row at least. And it, it became just a regular part. We did it every day in a row after that. 
Um, but the first few days, my advice too would be to anybody doing this at home for the first time is to make sure you're seated. Uh, <laughs> because <laughs> we, you know, my, my band is 73. After we did this a few times, I remember seeing kids go, ooh, and, and get oh, very right. lightheaded. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and, and even my private lessons, I started giving the kids the advice of like saying, hey, if you if you try to get this big sound and you're pushing the horn against the face, it often takes two or three days for your lips to, to heal and get back to normal. I said, but when you use a ton of air and you get tired, I said, how long does that take for you to, you know, regain your composure and, and, and get your energy back? I said, usually just minutes uh, for that. So we were seeing a lot of kids get get a little bit dizzy at first, but that's just because they weren't used to this this amount of air and, and support. That's, um, that's correct. And, and if I can add something that you touched on, um, I always tell the students in the absence of sufficient breath support or air support, the embouchure will attempt to meet the demand. OK. And that's not a good thing because that there's tension there. A lot of times young players, if they're trying to play uh, in a high range, like trumpets trying to go up to G, A, B, and they try to do it without enough air, you get that pinched, very sharp sound. Uh, mm -hmm. Even clarinet players trying to play a high C, generally they're on the sharp side and a lot of that has to do with not enough air going through the instrument and too much tension uh, in the embouchure. So I always say more air pressure, less lip pressure. More air pressure, less lip pressure. Let the air do the work, which is exactly what you just said. It almost makes me think of about uh, when, when somebody has, you know, certain muscle pain in certain parts of their body and it's because other muscles are underdeveloped like maybe the core is underdeveloped and this muscle is having to take uh the the load of it unnecessarily so uh right. but yeah well, and also we, we don't want to underestimate i'm sorry to interrupt you but oh no you're um, fine yeah but the the other thing about breathing deeply is it relaxes your entire body it has a physiological effect where it, it relaxes your muscles and it also, you, you get more oxygen into the bloodstream, which then helps concentration. So I, I tell the students, there are so many byproducts, you know, it, it, it's air in, music out, and, and a lot of other byproducts that are also conducive to better playing. Absolutely. And, and that was one of the things we noticed as well, which was um, there would be times even halfway through the rehearsal, we would, we would just start to get stressed, maybe... Uh, maybe my band's director would get them stressed or something like that. And we'd, we'd stop and we would do this breath and, and, you know, again, I'll, I'll state it. it it's very big, very aggressive, but afterwards we, we just felt good. We got what, you know, maybe one, I don't run, but maybe someone could equate that to the, the runner's high that, that people get, mm -hmm. um, you know, if they're doing long form running there. So. Sure. And you know, all our lives, we've heard people tell us when we get up tight, especially during these times right now, they, they'll tell you, just take a deep breath. Yeah. Well, no kidding. <laughs> like, <laughs> take, take a deep breath. It really helps. Well, thank you very much. This is very, very helpful. And I think, uh, as I said, this will be something that all of us can just put into play right now, whether it's to uh, improve our musical skills or, as you said at the end, maybe even just to relax and de-stress a little bit. Sure. Thanks, Alex. My pleasure.